Just six months after the original M1 Note launch, Meizu is back at it again with the M2 Note. With very similar hardware, is the Meizu M2 Note a worthy refresh? This is Bailey Stein with Android Authority, and this is my full review of the Meizu M2 Note. The M2 Note's design is very similar to that of the M1 Note, with a few seemingly minor changes. It still looks like a larger, curved iPhone 5C, and that's especially apparent when looking at the color options. Meizu's inspiration from Apple doesn't translate to a bad design by any means, however. The curved polycarbonate unibody design helps the phone fit nicely in the hand. The camera is flush with the back of the phone, the buttons are responsive, and the phone feels very solid overall. Although Meizu's mentality towards the M2 Note's design could be described as, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, there are a couple of notable changes. The first being the shape of the phone. The curve isn't as harsh as it is on the M1 Note, which makes the sides easier to grip while holding the phone. Secondly, the power button has moved from the difficult to reach top right of the device to the left side, below the now volume rocker. If you're still not a fan of the button placement, you can always use the number of unlocked gestures or the physical home button to wake the device. The physical home button is actually the third, and for me, largest change that Meizu has made with the M2 Note. The new button no longer glows and consequently no longer functions as a notification LED, but it's much better for navigational purposes. Why? Well, it not only functions as a home button, but also as a back button. That's important because on the M1 Note, FlyMe added an additional navigation bar for the back key, a poor implementation to say the least. The swipe up to access the recent app tray gesture is still present, but I think that the gesture still ties in well with the experience. Unlike on the Meizu MX5, the home button sadly does not function as a fingerprint reader. Meizu did add a traditional notification LED though, to the left of the earpiece and 5 megapixel front facing camera. The 5.5 inch 1080p sharp IGZO display on the M2 Note is beautiful. It's very similar to that of the M1 Note's display, except with more vivid colors and a slightly warmer color temperature. It's fully laminated coated in Corning Gorilla Glass 3, has excellent viewing angles, and looks great outdoors. The brightness range is also pretty good, and the adaptive brightness is responsive to environmental changes. It's the best smartphone display I've seen for under $200, and it makes media consumption a very enjoyable experience. This time around, Meizu is offering a system setting to adjust the color temperature, something that some users will definitely appreciate. Powering the M2 Note is the octa-core 64-bit MediaTek MT6753, clocked at 1.3 GHz. What's odd is that the processor is actually slower than the slightly older MT6752 used in the M1 Note, which is also an octa-core 64-bit chip, except that it's clocked at 1.7 GHz. This makes the phone feel slower than the M1 Note, and the benchmark scores are about 25% less than they are on the M1 Note. Day-to-day -day performance is still good, but not as good as some other phones in the same price category, including the M1 Note. There's also still 2GB of RAM, which should be enough for most users. The Mali T720 GPU is also a slight step back from the Mali T760, but it should be able to play most games without any serious issues. The Meizu M2 Note supports 802.11n Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth 4.0. The GPS signal could be a bit stronger, but it's much better than it was on the M1 Note and should work while using the phone outdoors. Unlike its older brother, the M2 Note supports quad-band WCDMA as well as FDD LTE and TD LTE. Unfortunately, it only works with up to HSPA Plus on AT&T and T-Mobile, but speeds do seem to be pretty good, at least on AT&T in the Detroit area. The side-firing speaker sounds exactly like it does on the M1 Note fairly loud, but distorted at full volume. It's unfortunately very easy to cover the speaker while holding the phone, but that's really the case with any phone with side-firing audio. There is an internal 3100 mAh battery, which in my testing lasted through a full day of heavy use. I started my day at about 9am with brightness set to auto and Wi-Fi off for most of the day. I took a bunch of pictures and also used GPS for about 20 minutes. The phone lasted until about 11pm with just over 4 hours of screen on time. I think that's pretty good considering that particular day's usage. The 13 megapixel Samsung rear camera captured some good images and some not so good images. It's really just kind of average at this price point. Images seem to have good color reproduction and detail, but it does have some exposure issues. Tapping a light object can result in images that are too dark and vice versa. 
The camera app does provide a respectable amount of control in manual mode, and the auto mode is fairly easy to use. The Meizu M2 Note ships with Flyme 4.5.1, a forked version of Android 5.1 Lollipop. Flyme does get a lot of things right, but it also has a few flaws. I'll start with a list of the positives. The gesture wake-up settings are great. Letter gestures can be customized and the phone executes gestures very quickly. I like how you can choose which apps you want to launch when swiping left or right at the lock screen. The custom icons used for Flyme's launcher are actually pretty good, and you can always turn them off in the settings. The system apps are all beautifully designed, the music app has a large collection of free to stream music, and the tips app is very informative. Smart Touch is kind of cool, the included power saving modes go beyond what is offered in stock Android, and the Flyme 4.2 cursor bug has been fixed in 4.5. Finally, the animations throughout the operating system, despite taking some obvious inspiration from a certain fruity tech company, are consistent and provide a very nice visual experience. Now to the negatives. The lock screen doesn't display your notifications, the launcher does not include an app drawer, and the phone chips with a bunch of useless Chinese apps, which thankfully can be uninstalled. The notification tray still lacks a settings shortcut, so if you want to access the settings, you have to go home first and then find the settings app. The settings app itself is a very watered down version compared to stock Android, and the pre-installed keyboard isn't very good for English users. Unfortunately, many apps and features require you to either speak Chinese or live in China. You can't buy any music subscriptions, apps, or themes, and the voice assistant and drive mode are both limited to the Chinese language. There's also a lack of Google Play services out of the box. Some retailers will install these services for you, but if you perform a factory reset, you'll likely lose them. Fortunately, there are a few Google Installer apps available in the Meizu App Center, but even after running, the Google app does not work, at least for me. That means that I wasn't able to use Google Now, nor able to use Voice for any sort of text input. I realized that the phone wasn't intended for markets outside of China, but I think that Meizu could have at least made the experience better for non-Chinese speaking users. The Meizu M2 Note is available through many online third-party resellers starting at about $160. Color options include white, gray, blue, and pink. There are 16 and 32 gigabyte variants, but if that's not enough, you can always expand it using a microSD card, up to 128 gigabytes. Just keep in mind that you're going to lose one of the SIM slots if you choose to do so. The Meizu M2 Note is a great phone which improves on the already solid M1 Note. Although Meizu's update comes just months after the initial release of the M1 Note, the changes made in the M2 Note are relatively minor and should not upset M1 Note users. The M2 Note is really just a slightly better version of the M1 Note, with more refined edges. With a comfortable design, excellent display, and great battery life, the M2 Note shines in areas where most other budget devices don't. That's not to say it's without its flaws, however, as the performance is disappointing, the camera is still about average, and the Flyme software experience could be better for non-Chinese users. If you can 